Whew, these fumes are getting to me. And in this episode, we talk about fiberglass and everything that you need to know about it when it comes to car audio. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show that reveals the secrets and mysteries of car audio and teaches you the techniques to take your installs to the next level. I'm your host, Mark. <laughs> so in cruising around on the internet and checking out some of your guys' questions, I've seen a lot of reoccurring questions about fiberglass products, and a lot of these questions always seem to go unanswered. So what I'm hoping to do in this video is address some of those questions. What you have to understand is fiberglass is something that will really take your car audio installs to the next level. You're going to be able to do door pods, you're going to be able to do amp racks, you're going to be able to do sub boxes that aren't square or flat. You want things to be as interesting as possible. So in this episode I hope to answer some of those commonly asked questions and teach you guys some of the stuff that you haven't quite seen before. Let's go over fiberglass products. Let's start out with talking about the most important thing, resin. So as you can see here, we have polyester layup resin. Now in any case in car audio, you're going to probably want to be using polyester resin, at least for all the tutorials I'm going to be showing you. And if it's anything different, I'll let you guys know. But some important qualities of polyester resin are you want to have a manageable cure time, you want low curing shrinkage, which is important because you don't want a molded part to actually shrink while you're forming it. And finally, you want high heat distortion temperature as well as resistance to other chemicals because we're going to be putting, um, you know, adhesive on the resin once it's cured, things like that. So those are important qualities to look out for. I like to get my resin from U.S. Composites. And you'll note that I get the 435 standard resin. Now I wanted to point out that you can get the resin that you've seen me use in some of my previous tutorial videos. This is actually from Home Depot. It's uh, just standard 3M fiberglass resin. But the uh, issues that you're going to have to address here is the cure time is uh, a lot more inconsistent. And even though it says non-shrinking, it seems to have a lot more of a shrinkage rate uh, than the resin that I get from US Composites. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's okay to work with, but it doesn't wet out the fiberglass as well either. It's just a little bit more difficult to work with. Now the next product we're talking about here is MEKP, which is methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. And what you guys need to know is this is basically the catalyst for your resin. So most resins, make sure you take note that they include the MEKP with them. Otherwise, you're going to have to buy it separately. But every supplier I've ever bought MEKP from, they either include a little mixing cup like this, which I like better because then you can see how much you're actually adding, or they'll have graduations on the container. That way, you would have to determine how much you're actually losing out of the bottle. But I'm going to give you guys a nice handy dandy tool here. As you can see on screen, we actually have a table for you. Now the way this table works is you'll note on the top it says outside temperature, whereas the bottom of the table has inside temperature. So what you need to determine first is whether you plan on working outside or you plan on working inside. Now the difference here is on the inside you can generally regulate your temperature to around 72 degrees. So then you can see how much MEKP you should add in in order to have a certain time to cure. So on the left, say you're mixing up a batch of 8 ounces of resin. And I've found that generally a 1% ratio is the best as if you put in too much MEKP, you risk uh, shrinking at far too rapid of a rate. So again, if we had 8 ounces and we wanted 1% MEKP by volume, we would put in 2.4 milliliters. If you guys like this table, feel free to head over to my website. There'll be a link down in the description and you can download it and print it for future use. So here now we have the strength of the operation, our fiberglass chop mat. This is made of extruded glass fibers at random angles and basically it's held together with a chemical binder. This binder actually dissolves once the resin is on the fiberglass. Now I want to point out, chop mat adds much more strength when it's used on curved applications. And this is actually a myth that I commonly see. I commonly see people talk about on forums how they added strength to the inside of their wooden MDF fiberglass box, which 
mind you, is flat surfaces by putting on fiberglass resin and fiberglass mat. Now here's the thing, yeah, it adds a little bit of strength, but when you're on a flat surface, you're not really adding strength. You know, the surface is already strong this direction not so much this direction. And the fiberglass, when flat, isn't gonna become strong in that direction unless you add curves. So here's a secret, you guys. You really wanna add some strength to the inside of your box? Take some common rope, run it along the inside of the box, put resin on it, and then put chop mat over that rope so that there's curves like this in the chop mat. That's how you add some serious strength. That being said, I have a quick question for you guys. So I want to go over quickly what the different weights of the chop mat mean because this is another question that I commonly see online. Now this here is actually one and a half ounce chop mat. Now if it was two ounce chop mat, what that means is it would actually be a lot more dense. Now, if it was half an ounce, it would be a lot more spread out, the fibers. Now, where this is important is say that you have a surface that has a ton of like wavy up and down curves, okay? You're gonna wanna use the half ounce because it's gonna easily form into those curves. But understand to get the same amount of strength, you're gonna have to add more layers. In most of our applications, you guys, you're gonna be okay with using one and a half ounce chop mat. So feel free to purchase that with no worries. Ah, the lowly chip brush. The chip brush is important in our fiberglass techniques because, well, it's really cheap. This was actually about 10 cents. So I have a, a ton of them. What's awesome about the chip brush is you can use it to spread your resin onto a loose fabric surface and then just throw it away once the resin's cured. Now I'm gonna show you guys, obviously you would wait for that loose surface to harden as you've seen in our amplifier rack tutorial. But once it was hard, that's what she said. <laughs> you're gonna wanna use a fiberglass roller. Here we have a fiberglass roller. Now what's nice about a fiberglass roller is when you use it, you're gonna wanna pull the resin like that through the chop mat. Now I'll show you guys this in our door pod tutorial. But what's awesome about this is it really allows you to wet out the chop mat effectively and get full use of your resin. It also allows for really, really clean, perfect layup. You guys will definitely see that as we go through the door pods. Now I just wanted to show that there's actually different types of rollers. There's different sizes, different diameters of the actual roller and types. This is actually a corner roller. What's nice about this is you can really get into the corners of your install and lay the chop mat down into that corner effectively. Now I should point out that these are, are a little bit more expensive. They're generally in the uh, eight to $12 range. So you're gonna wanna reuse them so you can clean them with acetone. Finally, we have, well, you know what? I'm gonna leave this one a secret. If you guys know what it is, Go ahead and comment below and see if you can tell me. This, just to give you a hint, is something that I have not seen used quite nearly enough. But it can really make your install perfect and take it to the next level. I hope this helped clear some things up for you guys. If you guys have additional questions about fiberglass products, be sure to post up in the comments down below. I love to answer the questions. Also, be sure to answer my question to you. What do you guys think the biggest car audio myth is. Huh? What's the biggest car audio myth? Post below. So, I know many of you guys are planning on following along step by step as I begin to do this door pod build. So, if you want to also do door pods in your vehicle, now might be the time to get some of these products coming to your door, ordering online, things like that. I'll probably leave a few links down below of where you can find some of these different products. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really appreciate all your ratings, so thank you. And I want to just give a quick shout out to OldSchoolStereo.com, also known as Big D Wiz. He's a great YouTuber. Uh, it's really, really interesting to check out some of the older, old school car audio stuff. And he just does amazing, amazing amplifier reviews. Um, I mean, he goes through and checks every single imaginable thing on these old school amplifiers and... Uh, 
pretty impressive stuff. I really like it. So I'm going to link him down in the description below. As always, check out Soundman, Steve Mead. You guys, you guys subscribe to all these different YouTube guys so that you have a constant income of car audio sexiness. Am I right? Or am I right? Or am I, am I right? All right, guys. Follow this. Peace. Keep it loud.